Welcome to the CSS3 project training series. I'm Mike King, your host. And in this tutorial, we're actually going to look at CSS3 backgrounds and some of the changes that have occurred with CSS3 in using the background properties. CSS3 contains several new background properties which allow greater control of the background element. In this tutorial, we'll investigate the following background properties. We're going to actually look at the background size, background origin, and we'll also look at using multiple background images on our HTML pages because that's now available in CSS3. And you can see the list of browser support for Internet Explorer. This has been available since Internet Explorer 9. For Google Chrome, it's been a, the background size has been available since 4.0 and background origin is 1.0. In Firefox, it's 4.0. Safari 4.1 for the background size and 3.0 for background origin and in Opera 10.5 supported, fully supported the background size and background origin. So we're going to go ahead and do some demonstrations and lab exercises with these new properties. So let's go ahead and move into our development environment and demonstrate what we've been discussing with the new background properties. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and minimize the presentation and get into our development environment. First thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and confirm that our Apache server is up and running. I'm going to go ahead and load up Opera, which will be the browser that I'm going to use for this particular demonstration. I've already got it in the root of where my files are loaded for this demonstration. And I've got my CSS3 underscore start file loaded. So the first thing I want to do is let's go ahead and do a save as. I'm going to save this in the backgrounds folder. And I'm going to save this as example1.html. And the background size property specifies the size of the background image. Before CSS3, the background image size was determined by the actual size of the image itself. In CSS3, it's possible to specify the size of the background image, which allows us to reuse background images in different contexts. It actually gives us a lot more flexibility being able to do this in the actual code itself and not having to worry about resizing our images for different aspects or different placements inside of our web pages. So you can specify the size in pixels or in percentages. If you specify the size as a percentage, the size is relative to the width and height of the parent element. So whatever element it happens to be in, that's what's going to be in reference to if you use a percentage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put a couple more. I'm going to add some stuff to our HTML document. I'm going to go ahead and copy these from the exercise file. I'll make sure that you've got a chance to type these in in a moment. So I'm just going to add an H1 heading working with background images. You'll notice I've got this div tag and then I've got a paragraph inside the div tag. Working with graphic backgrounds has become much easier in CSS3. I'm going to go ahead and save those changes into my example underscore one dot HTML. And that'd be a great time to pause if you want to go ahead and type that in. Because what we're going to do next now, we're actually going to in the head section of our document, I'm actually going to add some styling to this. So again, I'm going to go into the exercise file so you don't have to watch, watch me type. I'm going to come down into the head section and I'm going to go ahead and add my style tags. And I've actually added some styles now for my div and also for the paragraph itself. And inside my root folder, I actually have a couple of PNG files or graphic files that we're going to be using throughout this demonstration, throughout these exercises. And you'll see those as we um, work through the exercise. I'm going to go ahead and save those changes. Good time again if you want to go ahead and pause to type in the styling section that we did. One thing I do want you to notice, I've actually got a line height here I've assigned to the div. That's for the actual element itself. I'm going to go ahead and refresh the browser window so you can actually see. Let's go ahead and load up example one. You can actually see we're bringing in this graphic now, this earth.png file. And I actually gave it a line height so that the actual line itself will allow the div, will actually allow the PNG to be displayed. I've actually set my background size, background repeat, and then brought in with URL the um, actual graphic that I wanted to display. You'll also notice that I actually sent some styling to the paragraph element itself. And the only reason I did that is just to push the text over so that it wasn't overlapping the graphic. Because if I didn't have this here, I would just have text overlapping the graphic, as you'll see in one moment, because I'll actually pull it out for one second. Save the change. So I just put in that padding to move the text outside of the graphic element itself. And we do that quite often as we're setting up our HTML pages. But you can see now it's a lot easier now using this background sizing to actually size this image. This image is much larger than the image that you're actually seeing displayed in the HTML web page. 
And the only reason I used one size, if you want to maintain the proportions, because normally you would use height and you would use width. But if you want to maintain the proportions, because if I were to put 100 pixels here as the width, also save the change and refresh. It's giving us that same dimension, but we can actually have it. Say I wanted it half as wide. I could save those changes, refresh the browser window. And now you see we've got this thing half as high as it was. So again, just being able to change the dimensions themselves allows us to do a lot of different things now with our graphic images inside of HTML, something that wasn't available prior to CSS3 is this background size property. Very, very cool. It gives us a lot more flexibility in what we're doing. If I put one in, it's going to maintain the proportions based on the original graphic. So it's going to keep the proportions correct. And I can make this anything I want. I can make it 100, I can make it 75. Whatever size I wanted for that particular space, the space that I had, I would base that on the actual background size itself. We can also stretch the graphic to completely fill a content area, and we're going to do that in the next example. Okay, so we can also stretch a graphic. I'm going to go ahead and save this. I'm going to do a save as. I'm going to save this as example2.html. I'm going to go ahead and remove all this code. So we're going to actually do a different example this time. I'm going to go into my exercise file. I'm going to go ahead and copy out some more HTML that I'm going to put in here. I'm just going to go ahead and copy this. I'll give you a second. Once I get it in, you can go ahead and pause. You'll see we've got a div element. I've got an H1 and I've got a P tag. I'm going to go ahead and save those changes. I'm going to go back and refresh our browser window, load up H2 or uh, I'm sorry, example underscore two dot HTML. You'll see now that I've got this H1 heading and I've got a nice paragraph of text on the planet Jupiter. Now would be a good time to pause if you want to go ahead and type this in. The next thing I want to do is I want to add some styling because we're actually going to do some styling here, not only to the div element itself, but I also want to add some styling to my H1 and my P tag. So again, I'm going to go ahead and copy this from the exercise file inside my style elements that are embedded inside the head section of my document you'll see that i've got some styling for my div we go ahead and clean up my formatting here we'll talk through these in one moment as to what i've done with the styling i actually have styled the h1 and i've actually styled that paragraph element that i have inside there let me go ahead and save these changes. Go and scroll up just a little bit so you can see everything. Now would be a good time to pause if you want to go ahead and type all that in. Okay, so what I've done here, I actually have this div element set up. And what I've done is I've given the div a width of 90% of my browser window. I've given it a height of 450 pixels and I've assigned a background image to it. And I've told the background size to be 60% of the container. So in other words, my container is 90% of the HTML element, which is 90% of the body element in this particular case. And it's going to be 60% of that 90%. So if I were to refresh this browser window, you'll see now that we've got this nice faded or, or alpha impacted graphic that's behind my actual text. And then what I've done is I've just added some padding to our headings and I've given width to our paragraphs so things line up a little bit better in here. But basically what we've done is we've just, we've added an image behind our content area and then I've put my text in front of it. The image itself is actually that transparency that you see on the image is actually was done in the image itself. It's not something I'm doing with CSS even though we can do it with CSS and you'll see that in a future demonstration. I think I'm going to do that when we get into gradients. We can actually do transparencies. But um, I actually did that particular transparency itself was done with the image in Fireworks or Photoshop. I, I believe I used Fireworks to do that one. But you can see here now that again, because of these new background size properties, I mean, it's a lot easier now to bring images in and size them and set them up inside of our HTML, much easier than it had been in the past 
with um, the old versions of CSS. The background origin property is, works a little bit different than what I originally expected when I first read through the specification. But the background origin property specifies the positioning area of the background images. The background image can be placed within the content box, padding box, or the border box area. And what I'm going to do in my examples, I'm going to actually set up a contact box and a border box so you can actually see what I'm talking about. I'm going to go ahead and save this. I'm going to do a save as. Let's go ahead and save this as example3.html. I'm going to go ahead and pull out all my styling. I'm going to go ahead and pull out my HTML. I'm going to go back here. Let's refresh. Let's load up number three, and we should have nothing in there. Save. All right, there we go. Everything's fresh now. Now what I want to do is I'm actually going to set up, again, like I said, a background origin, and I'm going to set up a border box first. So I'm going to go copy this from my exercise file. I'm going to come down into my body elements, and I'm actually going to put, put some additional space in here so you can see the difference or the separation between these two. And then I'm going to come down right below that, and I'm actually going to put in a content box. And again, I'm just going to add some additional space so you can see the spacing in here. I'm going to go ahead and save these changes. I'm going to refresh my browser window so you can see what I've done. And basically, all I've done is I've put two different groups of text. And one is going to be a border box based on the way that I style it with my styling tags. And the other one is going to be a content box. So let's go ahead. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to put in the styling that's pertinent to both. Let me first off, let me go ahead and scroll up here. Now would be a good time to pause if you want to go ahead and type this in. All right, so I'm going to go into the exercise file. The first thing I would do is I'm going to go ahead and get the styling for the div elements themselves. What's consistent with both? And I'm going to come into my style elements. I'm going to come down right there and I'm going to put in my code, my styling for the divs. And this is styling that will pertain to both my divs. So I'm going to go ahead and save those changes. I'm going to refresh my browser window. And you can see now that we actually have styling now that pertains to both of our divs. They both look exactly the same. I've given them a two pixel border with a green outline. I've set up some padding, top, right, bottom, and left. I've actually brought in an image that we want to see. And then I've actually set up my, my background repeat, which is none, and my background position. I've just put the position on the left. And I can move that anywhere I want to based on my background positioning values. Now what I want to do is let's, for our border box, I'm actually going to add one line of additional styling. So I'm going to come right below that and I'm going to say div one, which is my background origin border box. So I'm actually setting up the background origin of this div one as a border box. Good time to pause if you want to go ahead and type that in. I'm going to go ahead and refresh the browser window. And you'll see now that we don't see any difference between my border box origin and the content box. But watch what happens when I put in the content box. So I'm going to come right below div one. And again, this time the background origin is content box, not border box, and it's for div two, which is our second element down here. Let's go ahead and save the changes. Good time to pause if you want to type in that div two refresh my browser window, and now look what happens to our image with our background origin sent to content box. So you can see there's a big difference now with background origin, whether it's a border box and whether it's a content box. As a content box, the image resides behind our content, and as a border box, the actual image floats outside the area, the content area, and in this case, because we put left, it's on left, but I mean, I could make this anything I want to. I could make changes right. I could put this anywhere I needed it to be, update my browser, and see now that we've got it to the right, I just have to change my padding. So, I mean, there's a big difference as to how these are displayed, whether or not it's a content box or a border box. And again, it's based on how they're set up inside your styling. The last thing I want to look at for background images is let's look at using multiple images 
for our elements using CSS. So I'm going to go ahead and do a save as. I'm going to save this as example number four. I'm going to go ahead and remove our styling from the last demonstration. I'm going to go ahead and remove the HTML from the last demonstration because we'll be using new stuff. And what does I want to do some multiple images now. So I'm going to go ahead and grab some HTML code that I have in the exercise file. I'm going to put that into my body element. And I've got an H2 tag, multiple images in our background, and then I've got a few paragraphs of text. I'm going to go ahead and save these changes. I'm going to go back and refresh and load up example four. You can see we've just got a few paragraphs of text and I've got an H2 heading. Let me go ahead and scroll up. Good time to pause if you want to go ahead and type that in. Because now what I want to do is I want to add some styling for my images themselves. So I'm going to go add styling just to the body element of our HTML page. So I'm going to come up into my style tags. And I'm going to add some body element styling. I'm going to add a background. And you notice I have two background images that are coming to play in this. I've got a background size because I'm sizing it again like we've done in previous examples, previous exercises. I've got my background repeat set to no repeat. I've given my text a color and my font family assigned to the text itself. I'm going to go ahead and save those changes. Good time to pause if you want to go ahead and type that in. Save all the changes to our file, refresh our browser window, and you'll notice now we've got this nice image with this spacecraft residing on top of it. There is a difference in the way these appear. If I were to actually reverse these, if I were to take my rocket PNG and make this my Earth PNG, and make this one the rocket, I won't see the rocket. And the reason being is because it will actually be behind the Earth because of the Z index. You can just barely see the little tip in the top. So there is, they do need to be put in a, in a specific order if you're not assigning a Z index to them, if you want them to display correctly. So I, obviously this one needs to be, the rocket needs to be first. And in here I need my Earth needs to be second. This is much easier than it used to be, again, using multiple images inside of CSS and bringing them into our documents. And again, because of this background size, we can do a lot of things with the sizing elements that we weren't able to do before. And remember, since I'm using a percentage, remember the percentage is based on percentage of the parent element. We talked about that in the first exercise. So it's based on the percentage of the parent element. In this case, the body element is actually set up to be 100% of the screen. So if I did, since I hadn't assigned it a width, if I did assign it a width, let's give it a width of 70%. Because now the parent element is 70%. So as I resize that, you'll notice now things changed inside of our graphic. We're still 30% of that available space, but we're only 70% of the HTML, the size of the HTML window itself. So a lot of cool things that we can do now with these new background images inside of HTML, inside of CSS3. It's made things a lot easier dealing with images, both as backgrounds and just dealing with images in general, sizing images and using images inside of our HTML documents. So I hope you enjoyed it. I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial.